Okay, quantizing. Pretty cool word, and it's a pretty cool function too. Remember how in the last video I talked about the grid? Now the grid is the lines coming down that show us what's perfectly in time, and we can see notes that are not perfectly in time, like this one, or this one, or this, and this. Basically all of them. Because I'm a human, I can't play perfectly. Uh, I can actually go in and make them perfect through a method called quantizing. Now, we don't always want to quantize. Sometimes it's better to leave things with a little bit of imperfection because it sounds more real. But maybe in a part like this, if I'm playing a synthesizer, I'd want to quantize it and make it perfect. So let's learn how to do that. If I take a note that is out of time, like this one, all I have to do is push Q. Aha, uh -huh, and it snaps right onto the grid. Now, the thing to know about quantizing is up here we have a setting for our quantize. If you don't know much about music, I would always leave this at 1 16th for now, but in the future we're going to learn how to change this to all these other values. If you do know what you're doing, you can experiment with this and try out different things, but 1 16th should always give you enough uh, grid resolution to get perfectly on time. Now, if this had quantized to the wrong note, say I played it so badly, that it quantized to this uh, grid line, I can just click it, drag it, and now it's perfectly on time here. If I want to quantize the whole performance, I just go in and select all of it and push Q. Now they're all quantized perfectly. Let's listen to that. If I turn on my metronome with the C key and play it against the metronome, See, now it's perfect. So for those of us who have a problem playing on time, we haven't practiced that much, Quantize is amazing. It's one of our best friends because we can just play pretty sloppy and then go in and make it perfect later. Now, if I reset this so they're not quantized, and I want to go in and change an individual one so that it is how I want it, but I don't want to quantize it perfectly, if I try to drag this right now, I can't get it like in the middle of these two uh, grid lines. It just snaps to the next grid line. We can push the N key. That's this button up here. This is the grid button. And now I can move it freely. Put it wherever I want. Put N back on and it's stuck on the grid again. N turns it off. N back on. Another way to do it is by pushing shift. I click the note and push shift. And now I temporarily have the grid off for as long as I'm holding shift. If I let go of shift, the grid's back on. If I push shift on again, now the grid's off again. So I can turn the grid off with N on off like that, or I can just do it temporarily. If I grab, say, a few notes, click them, push shift, now the grid's off too, like that, just for now until I let go of shift. So Quantize can put them all on perfectly using the Q key, or we can turn the grid off and move them individually if we want to put them exactly where we want. So again, I want to mention that we don't always need to quantize, but for now it's good practice to quantize because you want to understand how to use it, um, because it is a good tool when we're writing certain kinds of parts, especially if you're writing electronic music or something like that. Quantizing is part of the sound of electronic music because it sounds so perfect and satisfying. Uh, but sometimes certain genres of music, you don't want to have them quantized. So that's a decision you can make on a per song, per part basis. But for now, we should practice quantizing, and we're going to get a chance to practice that in the task, uh, which is coming up.